The meaning of the worship of goddesses today, or goddess. Today, more than 1,500 years after the closing of the last great pagan temple. In the Christian empire, the temple of Isis at Philae in southern Egypt, we are fortunate to be witnessing in the Western world, the reemergence of conscious desire for the experience of feminine deity. Of course, the feminine deity is a very old idea. If we can judge by the vast numbers of prehistoric female statuettes that have been found and interpreted as goddess figurines, it may well be that feminine deity was humankind's original deity. Feminist theologians re theorize that as the rule of men grew stronger in the human sphere, so the rule of male deity was thought supreme in the divine. <clears throat> You're right. The once all-powerful goddesses were stripped of their omnipotence by being given divine husbands and fathers to whose desires and dictates they were supposedly subject just as human women's truly subject to those of their own male family members with the spread of institutionalized christianity in the west the acceptability of the concept of the divine feminine was even more severely diminished the established church fought the idea of mary as goddess at every turn yet the need of humanity for goddess could not be subdued and practice Mariolatry, the worship of Mary, has been widespread among Christians, while esoteric groups have continued to hand down the mystery of feminine aspect of God, recognizing the spiritual truth of her existence, even while being forced to hide it under a cover of orthodoxy. Today's renaissance of the worship of goddess is a development crucial for the balanced spiritual growth of humanity for both women and men. The way we imagine the divine is vitally important. Our idea of what divinity is, of who divinity is, defines how we understand the divine mystery and influences how we human beings see each other and ourselves. The most well-known creation myth in Western Judeo-Christian cultures. The story of Adam and Eve says that God created man in his image and then created woman in, his, in man's image. She being formed from his rib. In this myth, then women are not direct images of God as men are. They are denied direct formation from the divine. They are denied a direct connection to the one male God. And these cultures and in the religions they created that which the divine is male masculine ways of being define god's way of god's way of being he is a divine father he is a divine husband he is a judge and a ruler woman created second is of secondary importance <laughs> she is inadequate as an image of God, she is not male's equal. Woman's inadequacy was specifically what many of the early Christian fathers taught. Since woman was not directly created in God's image and had no uninterrupted connection to God, she could only hope to touch him through her husband. Paul writes that a man is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Worse yet, woman was even considered opposed to God. She not only disobeyed him by eating of the fruit of the tree of knowledge, but she seduced Adam into joining her in that disobedience. For in her sin, woman was sentenced to suffer everlasting punishment <sighs> in the form of subjugation to man, as well as agony and childbearing. Man, for his part, was sentenced to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. For individual women, as well as for women as a whole, the psychological and political consequences of living in a constant state of disconnection from divinity in divinely decreed inferiority, punishment, and slavery are vast to this day. Ultimate evil is given a feminine face by some misogynist fundamentalist. I once read a full page ad in a well-respected biblical archeological magazine for a book that claimed to revel in the deep dark secret that Satan is actually female. <laughs> 
Exactly. The Roman Catholic and other churches still refuse to allow women to serve God as priests, <laughs> or better yet, priestesses, because that's what we really are. <laughs> they just don't want us to take over. The reason they officially give has entirely to do with the way they imagine the divine. God is male. Jesus was male. The disciples were male. Women are not male. Therefore, women cannot represent the divine to the congregation. Hospital emergency rooms today are filled with women whose husbands beat them into their proper secondary and submissive place. In the workplace, women's smaller paychecks still deliver a weekly reminder that they and their work are worthless than believe in their own inferiority. Wait, wait, wait. Are worth less than men and theirs. The very hearts of many women are filled with the soul-destroying belief in their own inferiority. And all of this is a divine sentence if we are to believe the Judeo-Christian formation myth, foundation myth. It is no wonder that many Western women have a secret, shameful sense that God has abandoned and betrayed them. To be sure, disconnection from goddess affects women deeply, but men also suffer without goddess. Without her, men cannot explore the full depths of their own souls. Without her, men, like women, are cut off from the one of the wellsprings of divine energy. Without her, they cannot fully understand the human women in their lives. If we do not know goddess, we cannot comprehend the fullness of the divine or of our own human natures. Men and women alike need to know our divine mother and our divine father. And while some have argued that the Judeo-Christian tradition reflects the completeness of data by using both masculine and feminine images of God in the Bible, the feminine images are extremely scarce. There are no more than a few such references. The masculine images of God as father, the bridegroom, judge, or war leader are, on the other hand, ambiguous. Furthermore, the only pronouns used to describe God are masculine. God is always he. The Judaism of prophets and the Christianity of the apostles specifically have no goddess, no great divine she. If we cannot see male and female combined in a deity whose face is feminine as well as one whose face is masculine, then we are giving mere lip service to the idea that God is both divine father and divine mother. Until we can refer to divinity with both the feminine pronouns as readily as the masculine, we cannot experience the totality of divinity. If we reject God as we reject a great deal of the divine truth and partial truth is a deception. It's a lie. On the other hand, when we connect commune and have a relationship with goddess as well as God, we find wholeness. Connection with goddess provides both women and men with a divine feminine pattern. It teaches us to honor all of humanity, women, men, and our children of both sexes. It brings us into relationship with the spiritual truth that she is.